but we still get asked a lot in interviews um, why is your music so political or, or, or do you really think art can change the world and well the answer is hell yes it's been done many times it's uh, it's it happens all the time it, it's happening here right now for for example music is um is loved by many people here at boom and that shared love helped generate our realization of interconnectedness and that realization of being connected changes the world politics is interconnectedness it's the air you and i and our children breathe it's our world we are all engaged in that and uh, some people think people say things like oh don't vote it just encourages them well they're not going to stop having the vote just because you guys don't vote you know passive engagement as we know is a weak form of engagement you're you're abdicating apathetically your your uh, your energy input making sure that it will be ignored rather than being heard so we know the truth our energy input is vital literally and as an artist that's what i'm interested in the real world so last year I, I split up with my girlfriend and it was a bit dark and uh, depressed in the months afterwards but sometimes one can use sludgy black dark energy to, to fuel one and get some new ideas going so I started to wonder if maybe films like An Inconvenient Truth and even Timber uh, had gone as far into mainstream consciousness as that approach was likely to be able to even images which had packed emotional charge like drowning polar bears were losing their ability to shock and people were not changing their behavior very much so this made me feel as a environmentally motivated artist that i needed to update my work it wasn't fully in the zone anymore we needed new vehicles we needed new strategies we needed to update and evolve what we were doing it was encouraging that eco-consciousness could be felt as a, a growing wave, but it seemed clear that change was just going too slowly to achieve very much. How soon would it be before a collapse of the environment became irreversible? Every estimate we heard seemed to bring it nearer and nearer the day when it's this great tragedy, the greatest unimaginable tragedy was coming closer and there were a number of horrifyingly plausible scenarios which seem to be getting nearer and nearer and unless things change i think we probably all know it, it's it's still not looking too good unless we get some radical change in human behavior going otherwise we're going down the slot and taking most of the planet with us which would be a pity so the problem is it looks as if we're not going to change our behavior much because we act selfishly like maybe i'll turn off a few lights but why should i give up my car if my next door neighbor isn't going to give up theirs we tend to sort ourselves out to prioritize ourselves priority one selfishly and acting selfishly means acting for ourselves it means acting according to our concept of the self which in this day is a somewhat narrow concept i'd submit I'm sure many of us feel that some vital aspects of connection to nature and connection to each other are perhaps weaker today than in other eras, other times past. Maybe we feel we've lost something very valuable there. We need to replace it. We need to redevelop it. We need to redevelop a wider concept of the self. If we had a wider concept, then our definition of selfishness would change and we would act differently. So I believe that this key evolutionary concept of the self arises from interconnectedness. Interconnectedness is the realization that we as living conscious beings are all connected in a web of intelligent life. We're strongly connected so that any and all of our actions resonate through the whole web. This is the actual meaning of karma. Albert Einstein put it something like this. The whole is called by us universe. A human being is a part of the whole, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of consciousness. This delusion becomes a prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few people nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion 
to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. My conclusion is our behaviour will only change positively when our consciousness is freed from that prison of selfish delusion described by Einstein until we embrace interconnectedness. Only then can we see how our actions karmically affect everything. So out of that, I felt I could focus my direction down to a single question. The question is, how does one make art which helps promote the realization of interconnectedness? I felt that was at least a good question, but a hard one. I don't know the answer then, and I don't know it fully now, but we're, I'm groping, we're all groping towards a solution to that question, I would suggest, as artists. So, to try and get a handle on it, I turn to game theory, which is a scientific technique that attempts to model behavior mathematically. Game theory, like many useful items, was originally sponsored by the American military establishment. Let's hear it for the military-industrial combine. Without them, we'd have no LSD and no internet. So they get it right sometimes, by mistake. So the US used game theory as a weapon to outthink the USSR in the Cold War. There's a whole story behind that, which is uh, brilliantly described in a, a BBC Two documentary called The Trap by Adam Curtis. And he shows how the valid and valuable insights of uh, scientists like evolutionist Richard Dawkins and before him originator of game theory, a guy called John Nash, were widely influential but they devastatingly ignore key aspects of human consciousness. They ignore cooperation, altruism, they ignore love. This is an example of what I call paranoid science. There's a film, a Hollywood film called A Beautiful Mind, which tells the story of how John Nash was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia when he laid the foundations of game theory. And this illness, mental illness, is clearly manifested in his scientific theories, which have been so influential on modern world views. This is paranoid science in which truth is twisted through an ego-fueled agenda to manufacture justifications in much the same way as religion is often often accused of doing. My friend Tantric Billy says, it is a fully mechanistic view, something that is immensely damaging when forced onto the fragile developing embryo of human intelligence. The view of the paranoid science version of game theory is that fundamentally cooperation does not work because it seems that no one can really trust anyone else. But if we rewind, game theory actually has much more to offer than its paranoid sponsors, the American military, believe. Game theory attempts to understand behavior through game models, animal behavior and human behavior, our own behavior. So I'd actually like to play a game with you now that I think lends some insight into the nature of cooperation and interconnectedness. It's called the gold coin game.